Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 13.3 Developer Beta 4. Now this was a bit of a surprise as I actually did a follow-up video a couple hours ago on Beta 3 and some other things Apple announced today as well. But they normally released updates around 1 p.m. Eastern Time, but instead they released this around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, they also released public beta 4 as well, along with developer beta 4, and on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, this came in at 132.6 megabytes. Now, the size varies depending on which device we're talking about. It can be a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. Now, let's take a look at the build number. The build number is 17C5053A, and this may come as no surprise to you, but there is not a lot of changes in this particular update. Now, along with this update, Apple also released an Apple Watch beta as well, and the only thing I could find that was really new in this is a modem firmware update for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, it may vary depending on which device you have, whether or not you have a modem up update, but this was much needed as in my follow-up video, I said I had issues with LTE that were previously fixed with iOS 13.2.3. So hopefully they've carried that over to this particular beta four update so that I no longer have LTE issues. It was completely fixed with the public release, but on the betas, when I would leave a Wi-Fi network, it would just not work properly. So now it should be fixed. In fact, let's test it out. If I shut off Wi-Fi and go to load YouTube, let's see if it actually loads or if it gives me an error. Right now it's not doing anything. So this is kind of indicative that there might be a problem. Let me see if I can load Safari. We'll go to Apple and I have no cellular connectivity. So I may need to do a hard reboot, but this is a common occurrence with these updates, but that last public update fixed it for me. So right now, let's see if I refresh. I had to flip on airplane mode, turn it back off, turn off Wi-Fi, and now it works. So it's a really big pain. And I don't know why it keeps happening. It is not specific to my carrier. It's specific to lots of carriers and their network switching. So I'll be sure to report that and feedback and make sure you do the same if you're seeing similar issues. Now, this particular build is seven builds newer, and I was not able to find anything new that was specific. I did notice that 3D touch or haptic touch feels a little bit more like 3D touch where you can press and let go and it kind of pops in and out. But that's really the only physical difference I was able to find. And I saw that on the 6S Plus that actually has a pressure sensitive display. It's kind of the exact same thing. So you can press a little bit. If you press hard, it just pops open a little bit quicker than it does on the 11 Pro Max. Now you can still press on the edge and get your different app switcher if you want to use that. But there's really nothing new in this particular update. Now with iPad OS, there's really not anything new. It's just the same update, same build number, but there's not really anything specifically new to the iPad. So unfortunately I'm not really seeing anything, but one thing I did notice with playing around with this for a little bit is things seem to feel very fast and responsive, even on the older iPhone SE or the 6S plus when you zip through menus and things, if I go back and forth, go into settings, things seem to load and move very smoothly. So I don't know if they keep improving performance in the background, which is very nice, of course, but for the most part, everything is working really, really well. You'll see there was a little bit of a hiccup, but that was the first time I opened music. So for the most part, it's running really well on all of these devices. I did actually load Minecraft. Let's see how quick it actually resumes. We'll see it resumes here in just a second. Then we'll hit resume and we're in. So it's in, in the night here, but it is working. It resumed quickly. I can do the same on the SE here. We go into the SE. I loaded it on this as well, just to show you how quickly it actually responds. We'll hit resume. And again, we're in the night, but it's actually working fine. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, I've been using iOS 13.3 beta three for a few days on my iPhone 11 pro max. And my battery health is at 100% on this device. And if you actually have battery let health go down, that's just because it's remeasuring it every time it actually updates the device. So that's already been down further than what you saw. It just remeasured it and showed it to you once you updated. Now, as far as usage, well, I've had the flu for the past week and a half and I'm finally recovering, but you may hear that a little bit in my voice. 
but you'll see, I didn't use my iPhone a ton. I used the iPad a little bit more, but I had three hours and eight minutes of screen on time, a one hour and 44 minutes of screen off time with about 30% use. So it's actually doing quite well. I'm getting about 10 to 12 hours of screen on time on any given day. So I think that's pretty good today. You'll see that I have three hours and seven minutes of screen on time, 48 minutes of screen off time. And I installed this update and I'm at 68%. So I think it's doing really well as far as battery, but battery life for beta four will take a few days to measure. Now let's take a look at the Geekbench scores. Now I ran Geekbench with Geekbench five. So if you're not using this version, make sure you're using it as the numbers will be lower on Geekbench five. So you'll see the single core for my iPhone 11 pro max is 1,330 multi-core was 3,406. If we compare that to the previous beta, let's see if we can find it since it was a ways ago. There's November 20th. These are the two betas here that we want to look at. It is about the same. It's off by about 23 on multi-core, a little bit lower and about five on single core. So it's not doing terrible, but those numbers could change over time as all of the background processes finish. Now let's go ahead and take a look at all of these devices as far as Geekbench is concerned. Now from left to right, I have the iPad Air 2, then I have the iPhone SE, then I have the iPhone 6S Plus, and then the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So this should give you a general idea of what the scores are like overall. Now as far as a release date for iOS 13.3, well, we're pretty close, I think, and I think maybe as soon as next Monday we could see it, although Apple's been on kind of a break for holiday with Thanksgiving in the United States and then Christmas coming a little bit later and other holidays as well. So they may have some more breaks than we normally see. So it's possible we won't see this until the new year, but I would expect it before the new year, maybe next week or the week after. So hopefully we'll see a final release then with a bunch of little fixes and they'll tell us more specifics. Unfortunately, Apple has not been telling us many specifics as far as what's new. I wish they would do more like Android does and give us a bullet point list of what's actually new as far as security updates and everything else, but they just don't. But let me know how it's been for you. Of course, I'll do a follow-up in a few days. If you'd like me to let me know in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.